Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. Okay, I'm working on another wooden tray with some acrylic paints as a base. And this is a great way to prime wood uh, using acrylic paints. Um, especially if you're going to use colors. Let's say uh, you're going to do resin over the entire thing and you want to work with reds and oranges and yellows and such like that. This also helps out with if you don't want the wood to show through. Now granted, I'm not really doing it super opaque. I'm getting it mostly opaque. Um, but the combination of that and your resin on top of this will really make your colors really pop. Especially if you mix them in a way that uh, you may not be completely opaque. That combination with the background color will really make them good. And also if, let's say you're doing a painting and you're really manipulating your resin really well. And you heat it up and it starts flowing more and flowing more. Next thing you know, you got a really, really thin base of resin on your painting. This also helps out um, because that will make it really transparent. So you still got that extra punch of color behind it. Um, and it can also bring up um, the richness of the color as well. Like if you're using uh, tints or dyes in your resin ink and such, and they are intentionally transparent, it can, it can play uh, another element and bring in that texture of the acrylic paint. So we are playing with texture today and depth. There's kind of a whole series of these, so check them out. And I'm about to bring you in for a close-up. Any minute now? It's going to get to it. <laughs> okay, well, Hubby and I are working in the studio together, so this first part of this video is done with a voiceover. Yes, it's later on, and I'm in, my, in the house doing the voiceover. But that way we can work together, and it's not an issue the next day uh, which is the resin day and I'll let this really dry really well and I recommend with paints that you let them dry at least a good 24 hours before you throw resin on top of it so just a heads up on that I really like this the brushy look to acrylic paints like a lot and this paint here uh, Lumiere by Jacquard has a nice pearlescence to it too Okay, so it's experiment time. I was just doing a tray and I had a thought and I'm gonna try it out on this one. So we're doing our second coats on top of acrylic paintings or acrylic paint for the base. And I've been adding subtle colors to the top, meaning like not covering the whole thing up, they're accents. And I had a thought about putting in the color here before I start tilting it around. So, yeah, let's get to it. And I've got two different kinds of purples here. I've got a purple and I've got, I guess you can call it a wine color or burgundy. So, let's see. Do very coarse. This has got all kinds of sparkles in it. And I'll put at the end of the um, video a photo of the colors I use. So if there's anything you're interested in, you can just check out the video and... Or, I'm sorry, I can't talk. I'm busy boring. I think I'd be able to talk by now. But no. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll put a still photo at the end. So if there's any colors I use, you can just simply make note of the company. And... Add that to your collection. And I get all my pho uh, my colors from all my photos. See, here I go again. I can't talk. Hmm. Do I do gold? I'm still going to do a little bit of this. Okay. A little bit of gold here. So that was a uh, gold interference that I poured before. So it's a kind of a very pastel-y gold. 
but it likes to play with sun, the the light. I always say it likes to play with the sun. It likes to play with the light. Ah, stop, Show play. There we go. Okay. All I'm gonna do is heat this up real good. So it moves and I can tilt it around. I think what I'm gonna do is flare out a little bit. something else and that is I'm going to pour some clear through this so we have some lines of clear cutting through all right Here we go. All I'm gonna do is do the same kind of thing I normally do when I tilt it, but this time with all of the layers, we'll move at the same time. Kind of like I do with my dirty pores, except for these are kind of transparent layers. And once they make connection, then they start moving as a whole. So I'm going to keep going. Come back down here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do I add something to this or not? I really like the way this is ribboning out. You know, I think I'm going to leave it like this, to be really honest with you. All right, let me bring you in for a close-up. All right, here's the overall. We're going to zoom in. All right, let me zoom you. So you're gonna get some texture in there uh, occasionally, but because of the way I did my tilt, the texture is a lot more in the background. So you're getting it a little bit in here with the pattern going over it. A lot of really cool blends. It almost has a galaxy kind of feel to it. That purple has a lot of sparkle in there. Now you see that, that squiggle that's going through the white? That came in when I poured the clear on top of all the colors and it kind of broke, see it actually literally broke through and pushed through the colors. So that's real interesting. If I didn't have the painted background, you would be seeing a lot more wood in the background right now and not as much color. Because I didn't add a whole lot to this and it would be transparent otherwise. All right. There we go.
All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And check the links in the description below. The, you'll find one for all the supplies I use, as well as Artist to Death, where I get all my colors. And don't forget, there's a coupon code. And my Etsy store, because, well, I've got art up, and it needs to be sold.